AI content is currently flooding the internet. I'm sure you have seen the images, the animations, the articles, the memes. We have all seen the memes at this point. Uh, and it's sparking a lot of fear. People think that AI is going to come for your job. Now, uh, if you're a plumber, a welder, carpenter, roofer, contractor, co bricklayer, concrete mixer, you know, any real job, I don't have a real job, any real job, you're totally safe. AI can do nothing for you. Uh, if you're a journalist, though, uh, you're, I, I would say learn to code, but it's also coming for the coders. Uh, except for one journalist. This guy, for now at least, has the last laugh. I, I can't find the author of this, but this is an article that I'm just going to link in the description because it's filled with ads that might start making noise and junk like that. I don't know about copyright anything, but it's on a site called Venture Beat, and this was making the rounds on Twitter this morning. Uh, and here's the title. The title really says it all. The AI Feedback Loop. Researchers warn of model collapse as AI trains on AI-generated content. Gonna poison itself, folks. Now, uh, of course, I am James Craig. I'm a science fiction author. I do love the topic of artificial intelligence, and I gotta show for myself a bit. If you want a story where the AI is actually gonna help you get a job if you get down on your knee and you ask for it, uh, you should check out my first book, Faceless, book, book one of the Bastion Blackstone series, because I got the sequel coming out this summer. Now, enough of that. Let me talk about ChatGPT. You see, in only I'm just going to read from the article here. The age of generative AI is here. Only six months after OpenAI's ChatGPT bursts onto the scene, as many as half of the employees of some leading global companies are already using this type of technology in their workflows. And many other companies are rushing to offer new products with generative AI built in. But as those following the burgeoning industry and its underlying research know, the data used to train the large language models and other transformer models underpinning products such as ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, and MidJourney comes initially from human sources, books, articles, photographs, and so on, that were created without the help of artificial intelligence. A group of researchers from the UK and Canada have looked into this problem and recently published a paper on their work in the open access journal ARXIV. What they found is worrisome for current generative AI technology and its future. We find that the use of model-generated content in training causes irreversible defects in the resulting models. What does that mean? It means when the AI trains on data and does its best to replicate what a good result is, and you get like that image, and has that Vaseline sheen of not quite right, the AI thinks it did it right. It doesn't know what's wrong with that. If it knew what was wrong with that, it would fix it. So if it starts training on that not quite right, that sort of uncanny valley stuff, I'm not talking about the errors of like additional fingers and limbs and stuff. I'm talking about like even when you get the good image, there's just something off about it that you know it when you see it. Uh, that That is a form of over-contrasted exaggeration in the visual data. Uh, I can explain it easier in language. I'll get there in a sec, though. But when it starts training on that data, it's going to repeat that same error because it doesn't know that it's an error. And then it will take what it thinks is good and say, and then move a bit worse from that and a bit worse from that. And it's going to iterate and iterate and iterate until you end up with a, a model that can't actually make real images anymore. Uh, and this is getting out of hand because people aren't tagging uh, their content correctly as human created or AI created or hybrid or whatever. Uh, so when they do these massive like billion image internet crawls to gather the training data, uh, they are they don't know if they're getting human data or AI data. All the they, no human is going to go through a billion images. Uh, they're just going to put them all into the AI, and then it's going to bias it further and further wrong based on what the underlying error is in the system. Because for the record, these generative AIs are speaking Chinese to English people. Uh, it, 
even worse than that. The, most of these models, they literally do not know how it's deciding to do what it's doing. They just kind of get what they programmed it to do. And they can do tests. They have like an engineer's understanding of what's going on rather than a scientist's understanding. Uh, so let me jump down this article. How model collapse happens. In essence, model collapse occurs when the data AI models generate ends up contaminating the training set for subsequent models. Original data generated by humans represents the world more fairly, i.e. it contains improbable data too. Uh, Shumalive, who is from the paper, I assume, explained, Generative models, on their other hand, tend to overfit for popular data and often misunderstand and misrepresent less popular data. Jumalive illustrated this problem for VentureBeat with a hypothetical scenario wherein a machine learning model is trained on a data set with pictures of 100 cats, 10 of them with blue fur, and 90 with yellow fur. The model learns that yellow cats are more pre prevalent, but also represents blue cats as more yellowish than they really are, returning some green cat results when asked to produce new data. Over time, the original trait of blue fur erodes through the success of training data, turning from blue to greenish and ultimately yellow. This progression, dis progressive distortion and eventual loss of minority data characteristics is model collapse. To prevent this, it's important to ensure fair representation of minority groups and data sets, and that's not the way uh, left-wing activists use the word uh, in data sets, in terms of both quantity and accurate portrayal of distinctive features. The task is challenging due to models' difficulty learning from rare events. This pollution with AI-generated data results in models gaining a distorted perception of reality. Even when researchers trained the models not to reproduce too many repeating responses, they found model collapse still occurred as the models would start to make up erroneous responses to avoid repeating data too frequently. Now, you can avoid model collapse theoretically if you can somehow preserve pristine, accurate, real-world data. Uh, and maybe they'll be able to pull that off for image generations. I've been saying this here, elsewhere, private, IRL, on other people's channels. With image generation, you, can, you have proper training data. The, these models that they have out here now are not simulating reality. That's why they're not conscious. You, assuming that you're not an NPC flesh golem, are thinking about the world and you're imagining what will happen to the world depending on the things you do. That is the essence of thought and action and free will and agency. These models don't do that. They're, they're just generating off of patterns and extrapolating forward with no thought of where they're going. Maybe they'll come back and patch up and realign and error correct, but that's really not the same thing. Uh, you're, these hype men trying to get venture capital funding are treating these breakthroughs like they're artificial general intelligence, AGI. We're not there yet. Maybe it's going to be shockingly soon, but it's not these models. These models need training data. They need a human to go in and say, this is bad, this is good, this is best. Uh, and then it can array and compare and generate and, and push itself towards best. And with images, you at least have photography. You can take actual photos of actual things and, say, and tell the data, this is what whatever it looks like. Bicycles, microphones, dogs, uh, books, lava lamps. You can say, this is what it is. You can't actually do that with writing, though. Uh, People think that ChatGPT is going to start writing books that are worth something. Uh, but you fundamentally cannot tell ChatGPT, this is a bad book, this is a good book, this is a fantastic book. Because even the best books out there, the books in the English canon, are good for specific reasons and you ignore their shortcomings. I think I've covered enough of these books that I've discussed that in my previous videos. A human can differentiate the qualities and try and imit imitate those specific qualities. But when you put the training data in, ChatGPT just says, oh, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo is one of the most influential books because it's old. Uh, so I'm going to really pre you know, put a lot of weight in having a super drawn out arc that has almost nothing to do with the entire plot to, to pad for space. And the AI just doesn't understand that. Uh, ChatGPT will only, the only real training data you can put in en masse is probably going to be sales data. 
which means ChatGPT might be able to write the kind of book that hits bestseller lists. But if you've read those books, you really know that that's not in any way a, a reflection of the quality of the book after a certain threshold. Obviously, the book can't be too bad, but you can't pick apart the marketing, the name recognition, the industry trends, the time of year it came out. You you really can't tease out the the numerous reasons that someone will buy a book compared to like and just get what is the actual best writing. And if you do try and like hit up a bunch of English professors and scholars and all this and compile like the best of the best of the best according to human experts, you're not going to have enough training data to actually train the model. Uh, so th that's why I think fundamentally you will never be able to train ChatGPT to be you know, a top performing writer. Now, you are, of course, going to see AI generated books. They're already on Amazon. And pe readers are revolting. Re the reaction, which I encourage, is that a reader should feel like they were cheated if they figure out that the book they read was generated by AI instead of by the author. At the end of the day, the author is going to try, these kinds of authors are going to be trying to defend themselves that, oh, it's still my ideas. I'm just using a machine to write it faster. Or that, that's topics for the future. The, mar the industry and the market and the readers are going to sort out how to deal with that because... People don't want AI books. It, it, it's so transparently that someone out there is just trying to make a buck instead of pursuing artistic integrity. Now, maybe someone in the comments is going to rebuke, is going to argue against that, and I encourage you to do so. Leave some comments down there. Tell me how I'm wrong. Give me that engagement. By the way, uh, like and subscribe, please. Tell your friends. I'm trying to grow this channel. I want to hit 200 subs by the end of the month. Look forward to the book club video, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so when ChatGPT starts putting out, putting BuzzFeed out of business because it can write BuzzFeed articles better than BuzzFeed writers can, you're just going to get model claps. You're just going to get this race to the bottom garbage where it's going to start training off of itself and degenerate through the the same clickbait cycles, cycles that humans went through just a lot faster. Uh, and, you know, may maybe the eggheads working on this will figure out some solution, but they don't really have one today. So the, uh, you know, Skynet taking over has been pushed out at least a little bit. Uh, I'll have the link to this article in the description. I'll have a link to the Gilded server if you want to join the book club. We're reading Foundation by Isaac Asimov. Uh, and until then, cheers.